Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can bring this 3D model into any software like V-Ray or 3ds Max. And this is done by using photogrammetry, taking a bunch of photos, bringing it into a software that can interpret those photos and creating a 3D model. So let's jump straight into it. So just go over the camera I used. I used a Canon EOS 5D and I used a lens here for 24 and 70 mil. You don't need a fancy camera like this, you can use your phone. Today's phones have unbelievable quality. But I'm just going to go over the settings. In the aperture, I set this to f11, I set it to 1 in 30, and I set my ISO to 100. When you're doing this stuff, you want high texture quality, so you want an ISO of 100, because that, that'd be the least amount of noise coming in. It basically means the amount of light coming in. Then, as well as the shutter speed, if you have a tripod and using a tripod, then you can go pretty low because your handshake won't matter. I did 1 in 30, I probably should have gone a bit higher because as I'm taking the photo, a little bit of movement with my hand can create some blur, which you really don't want in these photos. You want it as crisp as possible. And then usually an F11 is pretty good. One other thing is overcast weather is great. I'm from Ireland, so it's unbelievable because we have overcast like 90% of the year. So that's all the settings you know, need to know in the camera. And now we're going to move on to how I shot the object. So when you're taking these shots, you want to go around your subject in a full 360 degrees. You want to make sure that the photos have at least, at least 60% overlap between both photos. So here I have an excessive amount, but they suggest in most of the photos when you're doing this is you should take 36 photos. So you're doing a photo every 10 degrees. So I took photos all around. I don't think I had 36. I had about probably 12 to 16. And then I got closer, took some photos. Then I went even horizontal, took photos here, and I just kept going around, taking the undersides, then took each individual piece and took photos of that. Then once I have the photos, I can then save them out as JPEGs and bring them into a number of software. There's plenty of photogrammetry software out there. The one I'm gonna be using is Reality Capture. So let's jump straight into that. Okay, now I'm in Reality Capture. And the first thing you want to do is you want to add in the images. So click on Input and locate your folder, add all the images and click Open. Now you have all your images loaded in. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to go to process over here in workflow and click align images. This shouldn't take long. Now you can see all the images have aligned. Now we don't need as much as it's taken. So it's, it's taken a lot of extra things. We only want up to a certain point. So we're going to move this box into where we want. And once you're happy, you can go in and you can calculate the model. I'm going to click high quality it really depends on the PC you have. I would, most times, normal quality will do just fine, but for this case, I'm gonna go all the way to high quality and click that, and I'll get back to you when it's done. There we go, we have our model. We have um, all the images wrapped up. We have the model in here, just what we want. We have really good detail, exactly what we want. And now the next thing is go up here and hit texture. So here's our model. It's all textured, it looks great. And like for such just taking photos and then it's processing processing it absolutely works perfectly so now what we're going to do we're going to export it so go to export option here and just hit mesh actually we're going to call this h2 hit save and we have some options here but the default are absolutely fine so click ok and let it export out now the first thing we need to do is we need to decimate the mesh, which means we need to create a low poly mesh that we're going to use. And ZBrush is great for that. You can use Reality Capture, but ZBrush is great at managing high res meshes. So now we're going to import it in high res mesh that we made and click open. So here's our mesh. It's been imported in. It looks a bit funny. That's because of the material we have on. What we can do is we can just change the material and we can see our model looks really good. If you want, you can edit in your model here for little details, but I'm not going to do that now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Z plugin. I'm going to go to decimation master and I'm going to press pre-process current. Click that. It's going to take a while. Once you've processed it, you can then decimate it the amount you want. Since this is a very, very dense mesh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Z plugin and I'm going to go to 1%. I'm going to go that low and go decimate current. And there you go. Now we're down from, let's undo that. So this had 24 million. And if I go up a stage, we're now down to 2 million, is it? 2 million, 454, no, 245,000. So I want to go even lower because it still looks pretty good. 
So I'm going to go to Z plugin and I'm actually going to preprocess again. So you go Z plugin and I'm going to change this to 50% and go decimate current. Hit shit F and see what we're at. We are at 122,000. Let's go again. Let's go to let's go 20% and decimate current. And that's getting low enough that we're losing some detail. So let's check what we're at. And we're at just under 50,000. That's good enough. So one thing we're doing, we're projecting the high poly to the low poly, but the low poly has to have UVs. But there's a big face here at the bottom that I don't want because it's a lot of wasted space. So let's delete that first of all. So then we need to apply UVs. So we need to go to Z plugin, go to UV master, um, and then I turn off symmetry and do unwrap. Now I'm going to do one other thing, which is I'm going to select these and make them polygroups. So once you have them all polygrouped up, you can then go back to your Z plugin and go unwrap and then click polygroups. Click this and wait for it to be done. Once that's done, you can go into your Z plugin and you can hit flatten and you can look at your UVs. And that's perfect for what we need. So I'm going to go unflatten and we're going to export this out. Hit export. And let's go to, let's go to, let's go to meshes and we'll call this low poly underscore two. So once that's exported, let's jump into X normal and project this high poly data down to the low poly. Okay, now we're at X normal, which is a great program. It's been around for a long time now. So it allows us to add in a high definition. So click high definition, right click, add meshes. And we'll click our high poly, click open. Then we're going to go to our low poly, add that in, our meshes, low poly, click open. And then we need to go into our tools. And we're going to click this ray distance calculator, which is going to be able to tell how far away our high poly and low poly is to a degree. So let's click it. And we're going to hit go. This will take a while. So once that read the file, you can now see it's computing. And this is going to keep computing for as long as you want it. Uh, 45 seconds to a minute is plenty and it's just going to be more accurate the longer you leave it So you can hit stop then you hit copy results. That's good It's copied into the thing and then you can hit close. So all it's done is It's added in these values your maximum frontal and rear distance and that just makes it a bit more accurate So let's go into our baking options in here. I'm going to do just normal map and base texture um, you can increase this, but I would be advised not increasing it too high because it can really increase the scenes, especially if you do an ambient occlusion, what we're not going to do. So I'm going to put it at a 4K texture, which should be plenty. And the edge padding, that's fine. 16 and 32 will be fine as well. So then we're going to pick an output. All right. And I'm going to pick a PNG format. Get a file name. Let's call it mesh2. Hit save. Now, in order for the map, the diffuse map in the high res to be projected to the low res, you need to add in the texture. So we're going to have to add in this base texture. So base texture to bake, click here, go back in to here, go into reality capture, go into our UV for our model and click open. So now you'll be able to project this. So let's hit generate maps. Once you've imported your low poly mesh, we need to create a material, which I've created here. I've just added in our bitmap. So if I go view image, this is what's baked out and our normal map as well, plugged into our material. Then when we add this onto our low poly, we get this. Perfect. So I have another scene set up, but one thing you need to know is this comes in at quite a large scale. So these are at 10 meters. So I need to scale this down until it makes sense. So I'm going to scale this down to a scale which I've already calculated here. And that should be perfect. Now, if I go into my camera here and I hit F9, this is what we have. Looks really good. Like just like that, taking a few images, bringing the high poly, baking it into low poly, we have this amazing high quality uh, piece of geometry. You can even bring it down even further, but I just wanted to show you the basic concepts. Uh, I hope that's been helpful and I hope you can go out, use your phone, take a bunch of photos and do exactly what I've just done and create brilliant results. So best of luck with it and enjoy your day.